Hey guys, I'm Cleo and welcome back again. So I'm here with the Mini R53 and I'm actually going to be changing the crankshaft pulley and also the tensioner on this today. Now I'm going to show you everything that I've got. I should have everything here laid out in front of me. So I'm trying to make the most of kind of like this lockdown period as I've got the time to do it all. So everything that I have here, so I've got my new tensioner. That is a Gates tensioner and it's actually already come pre-tensioned as well. For the actual crankshaft itself, I went for an ATI Super Dampener. Both the Super Dampener and the Tensioner I purchased from Orange, which is this company here. Um, yes, yeah, so they sort me out of one of those. Really fantastic company. If you ever need any mini parts for any generation, they're the guys to go to. Definitely check them out. I'll drop their website in the description below. Um, yeah, so I've gone for the ATI Super Dampener. The reason why I went for this one, it is quite pricey, but pulley itself is actually fluid filled, whereas the original mini one, this one here, is rubber. And after a while, that rubber just comes apart, and then that will totally separate and it just will totally just not work. So I've gone for a fluid Super Dampener, as you can see. There are some other companies you can check out that do supply the fluid type ones as well. Some blue Loctite, they didn't actually have Loctite so I had to get Lock Thread, but it is blue. Just excuse the red bottle, it is actually blue glue inside. So that's a medium strength blue Loctite. And that is going to be used for my new crankshaft bolt when I put the bolt back in. Um, that is the mini part number from Mini Direct. That was literally five pounds from Mini for the actual bolt itself that you need. So yeah, definitely get a new bolt. The actual ATI instructions say to use the existing bolt. I'm not going to do that purely because I've heard that those crankshaft bolts, the old ones actually, uh, sorry, the thread stretches. So for five quid, I've got myself a new bolt. Whilst I'm in there and taking the crankshaft off, I'm going to put a new crankshaft seal on, which sits behind that crankshaft. So I'm going to put a new seal on again, five quid from Eurocar Parts. Um, BMW wasn't actually open, my local dealership, so that's why I had to get one of these instead. I think it's Corteco, I think it is. Corteco? Yeah, Corteco seal. Right, and then of course the actual main part to do all of this. Um, so again, I've purchased a laser crank pulley puller set it's actually specific for bmw mini and the reason i went for this is because it's just literally already set up i haven't got to faff around with making bolts or trying to find things it's already set it was 40 pounds off of ebay so that's the actual set itself it comes with instructions as well on how to use it so that's the three bolts that are going to use to draw off the dampener and I believe the facelift and the pre-facelift dampeners actually use different size bolts which is why they've put a smaller set of these bolts in because I think I've got, I've got the pre-facelift and they use those smaller bolts going by the little holes in there which are tiny so I assume that's the bolts I'm actually going to need um, but also as well it's got the thrust pin that you need to draw off the old pulley which again it just saves me hunting around for another bolt to then have to cut the end off and make sure it all fits so it's just a totally complete kit and that is everything that I should potentially need obviously as well you're going to need a belt tensioner tool to take the tension off the belt I've already done that so that's already pins already been put in here to get the tension off so that I've now got slack on the belt I've done all of that yes yeah, so as far as things go i should have everything um like i said i've already taken the tension off of the belt so i can just take the belt off now and start cranking off the old crankshaft pulley and then i can remove that and then go on to the actual tensioner itself and remove that put the new one on and just reverse the whole thing so let's see how all these new gadgets work sorry to get that crankshaft bolt off i tried everything i tried all sorts of torque wrenches, bars, first gear, sixth gear, reverse, brake, everything, couldn't get it out. Um, yeah, definitely an impact socket on that to get rid of that because obviously it's got blue Loctite on it already. 
so it's just trying to break that Loctite to get the bolt out. So that's a 15mm. I'm just going to hand tighten that out now. Get that rid of that bolt out. And I'm not going to use that again because I've got a nice new one. So that is the bolt out of there. And then what I need to do is now align my crankshaft pulley removal tool into those three holes inside here. It's got my thrust pin, a bit of grease on it. Shove that in there. Okay, as far as it goes in. Okay, so that is my pulley removal tool fitted on there now, onto the crankshaft. So you've got three bolts, just make sure you use some grease on those bolts before you actually put them in the car. So, right, let's see if we can get this all wound off now. I have a 19mm socket on the end of that. And all I'm going to be doing is literally just tightening it up and that should just work the crank off of the timing case like so. My thrust pin is still in there, so I'll just have to screw that back out afterwards, but I'll do it in a minute. And this is the crankshaft pulley that's now come off of the car. It's actually not too bad, to be honest. So let me just, let me just take these all off and we can actually inspect the crankshaft pulley. So that is my old crankshaft pulley off. It's actually not in too bad condition. Um, what it is normally though, is this outer ring here is actually made of rubber and so is the internal bit. But what tends to happen is after time, that rubber obviously tends to crack and then that will then separate this outer ribbed ring here, will just separate from that part and it will just totally spin incognito one to the other. So yeah, it's actually in really good condition. I know it looks old and rusty at surface rust, but the actual rubber itself is actually okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, but we've got a lighter one and that's really heavy. Right, anyway, that wasn't actually my main reason in doing all of this. The main reason why I wanted to get into there was because I wanted to change the tensioner. So now that I've got that off, I can actually be able to fit in and take this whole tensioner assembly off so I've got one bolt in the top here I've got yeah because you can get all the access now I've got another bolt there another bolt here uh, there's another bolt at the top somewhere I think I don't know yeah so now I can get access and take this tensioner out with an old pulley on it and I'll give that a bit of a clean up to whilst I'm at it um yeah oh and there's the other bolt there that one little teeny weeny one inside there which you probably can't see because it's too dark yeah so now I can actually get the tensioner arm off and put that one on and then put my new ATI dampener on and that should be it but yeah I might go make a cup of tea and then come back out Next one is this 10 mil right here. Actually, I'll probably just get that out by hand now, loosen it off all right. So you've got that 10 mil there. So like I said, I've already broken off, so I can just do it by hand. 16 mil. Again, I've already kind of done that. Got a long old bolts these on. my 16 mil out so 16 out oh, I just got those two 10 mils right. 
Right, okay, so now we have the old tensioner off. And one of the reasons actually, or the main reason why I wanted to change the tensioner was because when I fitted that new idler pulley, um, I found that when I took it for a little test drive, I put a new belt on it and the car started up actually fine itself. But when I was driving out and I had it in third gear, did a quick pull in it and the belt just totally slipped so there was no boost on it. So that's why I kind of thought well, maybe it must be the tensioners failing. So again, going by, this is the old tensioner. So this is the old tensioner. And obviously as you can see, there is a lot. I mean, there's absolutely no kind of tension in that at all. It's really, really easy. So I can only assume that when I've gone to put the foot down, the belt's just totally slipped it's got no tension in that and then this of course is the difference with the old one and that is a lot more difficult to move up and down so i'm hoping putting the new tensioner on is actually going to fix my problem so i'm just gonna have to do the reverse fitting now to get that new one back on hopefully that's going to sort out my belt slipping issue and we have boost back and yeah also as well another thing that i noticed was actually the noise from the pulley it's got a really rough whizzy noise so that's kind of on its way out anyway and the new one absolutely silent and to be honest it hardly moves right so let's get this new tension to put back on um just a quick one as well just a top tip if you guys are interested in it you can actually get an outer tensioner stop fitted to these which is just a tiny little metal frame it's about 20 pounds or something and it literally fits onto those two bolts so that should this dampener ever fail or the strut fail basically it will stop the tensioner dropping down and then hitting your crankshaft pulley which really given that I've got an ATI I probably should have put one on to be honest but you know I might I might get around to do another one so yeah, you can actually get one of those. You can also upgrade the bushes on these two. You can get some Powerflex bushes, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put this one on. Um, yeah, it should be, should be pretty good. And if it doesn't, then I'll obviously have to upgrade and get some new bushes and attention to stop. Right, enough babbling. Well, let's get this bad boy back on. So I'm just gonna give these, before I put them back in again, just give them a bit of a quick clean up, just with some, I've just got some brake cleaner, just get rid of any dust or old lubricant or any built up oil and dirt. It's only putting dirty, threading dirty bolts back in. So I just get those prepped up nicely. Right, bolts are all ready to go back in. I'm just trying to hand thread these in as much as possible just so it makes it a bit easier than trying to fit a spanner a tight gap. Is that one? That's the 16, there's the 10, a little 10 mil again. Bolt's gone forever. Are we there? Yes, right, that's 10 mil. Done that one. Done right, so I've hand tightened those up as much as possible. So now I'm just going to get a spanner on and just tighten them all up with a spanner. And that is the new tensioner fitted along with some... That's why I always wear long sleeves, not short sleeves. But anyway, tensioner is fitted up in here. So that's all the new one done on now. Really simple job and I've cleaned all of my pulleys up as well. I've given that casing a bit of a wipe down. So the next job for me to do is I need to take that seal off. So I need to take that seal out, replace it with a new seal, and then I can then reassemble the new ATI crankshaft pulley. So I feel like the new pulley is not gonna go on quite as simple. I know you've got to heat the back up just to try and hopefully make it expand so it will fit onto the nose of the crank. 
but again this is all a learning curve for me I can't say I've ever fitted one of these before I've never fitted a tensioner before so this is all a big learning curve for me and I have no one to help me either so I'm just kind of doing it as I go but yeah best way to learn do it yourself and literally just drilled a screw just into there obviously make sure you don't damage the actual shaft itself and that just pops out so that's the seal taken out I'm going to put the new seal back in put a bit of oil in it and then put the new one back in and there's my new seal fitted so to do that I had a 32 mil socket to put over the top really you want a deep socket because it bottoms out part way round but that was okay it literally just popped it around the edges and just opposite sides tapped it in and just kind of all the way around just make sure that sat flush into the timing case okay and then of course we have the ATI super dampener that we're going to put in so let's unbox this nicely packaged so we've got some instructions that they've got in there some stickers cool. lots of cardboard more cardboard um, yeah also as well it comes with the 100 millimeter bolt so the OEM bolt is 75 millimeters so this is the longer bolt that I'm going to use to drive the new crank back on because the OEM one is too short so you need the longer bolt so at least it comes with that so I can drive the new crank pulley back on yeah, it's much lighter than the original OEM one I've just taken off. So there you have the new ATI super dampener. This is liquid filled. So now let's go and get this on. Now I know to get this back on, I'm going to have to heat up the back side just because this back part here is going to be quite tight to fit over the, over the crank nose. So if you heat it up, it'll just make it a little bit easier, expand it a little bit easier to fit that back on. So let's go put this on some kind of hot plate, heat the back up a bit, and then hopefully drive that straight back on. Don't put my bolt that was supplied with the dampener in. I'm just gonna hand screw it in as much as I can. Right then, let's see if we can tighten this up. So I'm just gonna do this by hand, just drive it all the way in. Right, so I've used the ATI bolt to drive that in. So that's driven it through enough and then it's bottomed out. So you can see, you might be able to see, there's still a bit of a gap. There's about that much gap to get to the back of the timing cover case. So I'm now going to swap it out for the OEM bolt. And that should just drive it all the way through to the end of the casing then. There we go. Right, so that's the new crankshaft fitted now. So it's got the OEM bolt in and I torqued it up to 115 newton meters or 85 foot pounds. My torque wrench actually measures in newton meters. So mine's 115, so that's 115. And then I had an extension and a 15 mil deep socket just to kind of give enough room in there so I can move enough. I had the car as well in sixth gear and I had someone standing on the brake because whilst you're trying to crank it the crank uh, the crankshaft will actually turn with it so you have to have someone on the brake really hard on the brake and then yeah just put it in sixth gear just to whilst you're tightening it up. Um, yeah other than that so crankshaft is all on now um, so crankshaft pulley is all on now and then the new tensioner is now on so I'm going to reroute and put the new belt on and then give it a start up and hopefully, fingers crossed, it's all running as it should be. Okay, so I've just started the car up just to make sure it's all running correctly as it should be. I've turned, 
I've turned the aircon on as well, so that's all all in place. I've got my aircon running as well just to make sure that all runs as it should do. And the new tensioner seems to have done its job. And what I found as well is that when I put my foot down, um, the belt just slipped. It was in third gear. I literally did a quick pull and the belt just totally slipped. So that's why I assumed that maybe the tensioner had failed. So if I did it, give it a quick. Yeah, so no more slipping. Awesome stuff. Turn it off now. And there you have it. So, new tensioner and ATI dampener is fitted. Um, yeah, I can't say I've ever done one of those before, but first time for everything. Um, all looks okay, running sweet. So I've just got a few more jobs to do on this and then we should be pretty much good to go. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's some help to you guys as well if you're looking to upgrade or change your tensioner or just do the whole lot like I did. Um, yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please do like, share, and subscribe hope everyone's keeping well obviously during this time whilst we have to stay at home and i'll catch you guys really really shortly there's plenty more i've got to do on this so yeah you'll see me really really soon see ya